Hey guys, Terry Hay here again from Shock Treatment. Today we want to be talking about steering versus cornering in a motorcycle. Now a lot of people will traditionally put steering and cornering into the same category, but they're actually quite different. When we look at uh, steering for instance, I mean steering is our ability to turn those bars. And so it doesn't matter whether you've got a dirt bike or a road bike, it's, it's all going to be the same. Uh, how we manage our inputs into these bars, how effective the response is, that'll all come down to steering. Now, cornering is quite different. And so cornering will result in the bike's ability to actually negotiate a corner. It'll all come down to the forces that are apparent at the front wheel. And so we'll run over that in a little bit. But first of all, with steering, very, very critical that we get all of this right, that we get the cockpit set up to suit our ergonomics. Okay, so we want to make sure that we've got the correct bar width, the, uh, the levers in the right position, our steering head bearings have uh, been well greased and, and correctly torqued, and our wheel bearings and everything, everything that is associated with the movement of the front end is as perfect as it can be. If you want to go back and have a look at some of the shock treatment tech tips, we've done a really good video on handlebar selection, and I'd strongly suggest you have a look at that, particularly with bar width and, and bar bend. Um, very, very important, and you'll get a lot out of it. So bear in mind, so steering is your ability to actually turn this motorcycle. Cornering, different thing. Okay, so cornering. What's the differences with cornering and steering? Well, cornering is naturally your bike's ability to actually get around the corner. And that will predominantly come down to the amount of force that's being generated between the interaction of the tire and the ground itself. So as we turn the bars, steering, our force is being generated because the actual tire is now moving off the center line and as that tyre moves away from the centre line, what we're finding is we're getting a horizontal torque being generated against the side of the tyre. And it's that torque that actually makes the bike go around a corner. Now, there are people that will say, OK, if you want to improve the steering, run the forks a little higher in the triple clamps, and that will sharpen the steering angle and make the bike easier to turn. Well, it'll make the bars easier to turn. It doesn't necessarily make the bike easier to turn. OK, and the reason being that as you feel that that bar is getting lighter and lighter, it's actually generating less force against the ground. And so this is where a lot of people go wrong and potentially are doing themselves an injustice. Oh, by the way, safety is very important here at Shock Treatment. Workplace safety in action. Bad shit happens in there. Okay, very simple drawing here. This is just a simple mechanism known as a tiller arm and a rudder. Now generally this mechanism would be used to steer a boat and to actually make it corner. Now the difference between steering here and cornering will be the width of the rudder versus the length of the tiller arm. If we want to make our tiller arm longer and longer we'll find it becomes easier and easier to move but if we make our, our rudder shorter it'll become easier to move as well. If we make our rudder longer it will become harder to move. Okay, but that will have a profound effect on our cornering. Now if we have a very narrow rudder, it'll feel very, very light at the arm when you pull it. So our steering becomes very, very easy. Okay, but what will happen is because we're developing limited torque against the, against the water, the boat will steer or it'll corner, but it'll corner in a drifting arc. Okay, and the same thing with our motorcycles. When we have a very, very light feel at the bars, we're actually not generating that much force against the ground. And so the bike will tend to run a bit wide on corner exit. Now, if we go and make that, that rudder longer, make it wider, what will happen is it will have an effect at the tiller arm. Basically, it will become harder to steer, but the boat will just hook around a corner. Okay, so that's the difference between a cornering effect and steering effect. Okay, so we've seen how steering and cornering develops within a boat. Okay, does the same thing happen in a bike? Yeah, it does. Okay, and so uh, instead of having a tiller arm, we'll actually have a set of handlebars. And instead of having a rudder, in our case, we have what we call ground trail. Okay, now ground trail is the difference between where the contact patch strikes the ground and where the steering axis strikes the ground as well. So to calculate that, we could project a line through the center of the steering stem straight down and we could actually note where that contacts the ground and then we could simply project a line, a vertical line, straight down from the centre of the axle. And where that line touches the ground, that difference becomes our ground trail. 
Okay, now there is what we call real trail as well, but we're not going to go into that as well at this point. And so the amount of trail that we've got will determine how much force is being generated. So with a small amount of trail, it's just like having a small rudder. As that, as that rudder or the, 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 the tyre turns in this particular case, we're generating a certain amount of force against that tyre. Now, if we have more trail, just like having a larger rudder, what will happen is we'll generate more force and the bike will actually corner that much better. The difference being will be the, the feel that you have at the bars. With a small amount of trail, we'll have a very light feel. With a large amount of trail, we'll have a heavy feel. Okay, so we're going to find that we're going to want different trail setups for different conditions. If we're in tight uh, technical terrain, for instance, we're going to find that uh, we want rapid steering. And so because we're not going at such a great speed, we potentially don't need as much grip as what we would in a desert race or anything like that. So, so effectively, um, in the tighter terrain, we can run the forks through, make the bike a little easier to navigate uh, trees or obstacles, and and uh, basically make our job easier as riders. In the high speed stuff, we're actually going to want a little bit more trail, and that will um, uh, that will help us keep things stable. The trail has a tremendous corrective ability as well. Now. As we're generating a straight line force, if that bike's going along in a straight line, what will happen, having more trail is just, just the same as a caster. Basically, if that wheel turns, it will basically develop a, a, a torque at the side of the tyre, and it will want to turn that wheel back into a straight line. And so subsequently, we're, we're able to actually take our hands off the bars and uh, the bike keeps travelling along. Okay, so I've quickly made up a model here to easily demonstrate the differences in trail effect with fork angle. And so the pointer that I've got coming down from the axle centre, that will represent the centre of our contact patch. And this particular piece of alloy will uh, basically be the centre of our steering stem. And so the difference between those two points will be our ground trail. Now, what will happen if we steepen the fork angle as you can see, the ground trail gets dramatically reduced and it doesn't require that big an effect on the, the actual angle itself. As I rake that out, uh, it's been dramatically increased. And so that will have a major effect on the apparent force that, that we're seeing both at the tyre and at the handlebars. Okay, now it's not just raking the forks out and, um, and putting them back that can have an effect on trail. What we'll notice is if you actually change the wheel diameter, what will happen is, uh, and demonstrated by this, this ruler, if we bring that up as our, as our uh, tyre diameter reduces, uh, we'll find that we end up with a reduced trail effect. Now this is very, very important for motard guys. Now with a motard guy, they'll generally switch from a 21 inch front wheel to a 17 inch front wheel, dropping the axle height by two inches. And so if we were to come up two inches, that's a, uh, that's a pretty major effect on trail. And so it's very, very common for guys on motards that uh, they experience front wheel chatter. And that's because they're just not generating enough force at the ground. And so that, that bike can push in the front wheel chatter. Okay, so for the motard guys and for anyone that's trying to engineer some more trail into the setup that they're not getting from their current bike, Basically, you can buy a modified offset triple clamp and that will project the steering axis further forward. And so fortunately with this model, just simply here by turning the tube, I can demonstrate the, the increase that we're getting in trail just from that steering axis being projected forward. So a normal, a normal bike might have something like a 22 millimeter offset in their triple clamps. For a motard guy, you might be dropping that by 10, 12 millimetres. You might be down to around a 10 or an 8 millimetre uh, offset. And so you can see the difference that that will make. And obviously that'll have a major effect on our grip, our stability and our feeling at the bars. Okay guys, just to sum up, uh, there is a difference between steering and cornering. Obviously the cornering will determine the amount of grip that's in the motorcycle. The steering is the amount of uh, force that you're feeling at the handlebars. Just make your own decisions as to what's going to be best for your situation. If uh, you're in the tight technical gear, well then obviously a little, little bit nicer uh, steering or quicker steering is going to be handy. And if you're in the high speed stuff, more stability and more grip is going to be convenient as well. 
Okay, so uh, just understand that you get nothing for nothing. As you make it easier at the bars, you're losing grip. As you increase the feel at the bars, you're actually generating more grip, but it's more work. Okay, so make your own choices. At least now you'll have a bit more information. Thanks for that.